My name is Suzette Ortiz. Uh, I am a Puerto Rican uh, musician, composer, and educator. I live in New Jersey. Um, yeah, South Jersey. Thank you so much for joining us today. So as folks who are watching this know what the film Chico and Rito is about. So hopefully we, we are understanding why we're having this conversation today. But I think that we can just go ahead and just jump right in. So how did you first start playing music? I start, I come from an artistic family and music was a, a daily thing in our home. Uh, but I was the only one that chose uh, music as a career. So I really started maybe when I was four, my, my parents would play music and they had given me a small piano and I started figuring melodies on the piano and then they, they saw that I had that passion uh, and they trusted me so well, they got me my first piano was I, I was only five. And back in the day, there were no teachers for young people. But uh, down the street, there was a Cuban teacher who said she will take me. And that's how I started. I never, ever stopped playing. I started at four or five. And then, then I went to the, I, pre I was prepared to go to the conservatory. And from there, I graduated. And then I taught for a while, and then I came back to the United States, where I um, continue uh, music education, my master's in music and piano and composition. Amazing. Thank you so much. So throughout your musical and educational career, did you have any influences or maybe some highlights that you wanted to share from your experiences? Absolutely. My influences are really vast due to my father especially he said if you want to be a musician you need to be well-rounded you need to listen to all kinds of music i was classically classically trained first so my ear was just into that but my father would play a lot of cuban music a lot of salsa and i used to pick up things by ear but in the beginning i wasn't feeling it i was more into the classical choral opera but when i came to the states and i needed to uh work in different ways that's when his teaching came through to me because i i started working learning how to play salsa and and jazz which i continue to learn and then i joined one of the biggest band in the city uh, playing salsa and i even had the opportunity to to meet and work with Tito Puente, late, the late Tito Puente. So Eddie Palmieri, all those great uh, pianists that I had always admired. So yes, my, my, my influences are really vast, but it's due to my father because he said, if you're gonna be a musician, you must be well-rounded. You must learn about different styles. So we, when you don't have work on this area, you have work on this area. And I treasure that forever. That's amazing. And what a, what a fantastic approach. That's, that's, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, now you're talking about the importance of knowing uh, and different styles from different places, but specifically you did mention Cuba and Cuban jazz and salsa music. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your experience with that and maybe why you feel like that specific music is so important? Uh, yes. Um, Cuban music is, is amazing. I had the opportunity to travel to Cuba twice to study. And the second time I went, I went to, uh, to perform with an all-female band. Uh, uh, I first started uh, listening to Ernesto Lecuona that came from the classical uh, style, but then he is also considered one of the beginners of jazz players, you know. And then I got into other great, um, pianist composers like Gonzalo Rubalcaba, Chucho Valdez, Bebo Valdez, you know, and, and it really touched me. And then I started paying attention. Most of this music was not written, you know, they're musicians of heart. Then later on, there have been people who have been transcribing. And I think they have, they, these Cubans are amazing musicians, you know, and, and they have like music and, but, um, that's how I started, you know, with the Cubans. So I have really strong Cuban influences and my music, when I compose, you will hear those influences, the Afro-Cuban and Afro-Puerto Rican. It's a blend. So I don't know if I answer your question, but I, uh, yeah, those are my influences. 
No, absolutely. And I'm sure this is that's going to be a wonderful tie into this film, especially given the subject matter. So thank you so much for for sharing that. Um, could you speak a little bit about the impact then of this music, specifically if it's jazz, salsa, piano, Cuban music? What kind of impact does this music have on Latin and Hispanic culture? Um, well, see what happened is uh... It, the, the biggest thing I see is how people of all races have embraced this. It has bring, it, it have built a beautiful community because, you know, like Afro-Cubans, Afro-Puerto Ricans, you know, we, we, I call it Afro because of our influences of three cultures in us, you know, African, Indian, European, okay? But uh, so the jazz, that have this nuance of swing and all that now have been influenced by these delicious, if you will, syncopated rhythms that are unique, nothing like them. And for example, the best example, one of my favorite composers, uh, uh, it was George Ger Gershwin. And one of my pieces was um, Rhapsody in Blue. So Ernesto Lecuona, for example, um, he was so inspired by this music that he wrote a, another piece, kind of like in that classical slash jazz called Rhapsodia Negra, kind of like an answer for Rhapsody in Blue. And that really blew me away. You know, it, it, and I, I, I continue to study this. You know, I, I haven't finished my studies on this. And, and that's why I love these opportunities because it made me go back to my notes. And now that I'm a, an adult and I can see things differently, it really sink in. So to, to summarize, the, the, this music has really worked in such a way that it has touched everyone, where every, every race, it doesn't matter who you are, can be playing this music as, as long as you get the rhythms because they're tricky, you have to work. <laughs> if I show you down on my piano, I have a bell because when I practice, I, I play the bell just to make myself tighter. But it, it just brings people together. Beautiful community, yes. Wow, that's uh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. So you're talking about your background and how, and in composing and in music and how you got into this. How did you get into teaching? I came into teaching by an accident. You know, I think teaching shows me, you know, uh, when I graduated from the conservatory, I had really blown my shots. I had studied so much uh, that I injured my right hand and, and I could not play for two years. Back in the day, you know, we didn't have the technology and the new medicine advances where they would tell you, oh, this can be fixed. They have told me I couldn't play again and in my world fell apart. And again, my family jumped in to tell me there's always plan B, C, and D. You could go teaching. And, they, and I said, I don't want to teach. I want to be a performer. And I said, you have special gift. And I went, a, there was an opening of a job in, in one of the renowned choirs in Puerto Rico, the San Juan Children Choir. And I started teaching there, ear training, music theory, and I would arrange for the choir. And then I would use my left hand. Of the sudden, it was like a big light in my heart where I discovered this uh, love for teaching, especially because knowing that I was a vessel to empower these young people. So I decided to come to the state and do my master's in music education. And when I was getting ready to return to Puerto Rico, I was called to work in the city of Camden as a bilingual resource music teacher, where I use music to teach our students, immigrants, English through music. And after that, that was history. I, I founded a, a choral program and I had my kids travel all over the world. You know, we went to Ghana, we went to Italy, Prague, Poland, Puerto Rico, and then we went to all of the states. And what made it big was that these kids were from a city that is very poor, where they haven't even crossed the bridge to go to Philadelphia. And, and they were empowered by music, and I was empowered by teaching. As a matter of fact, I think that teaching changed the way I look uh, myself as a performer. I don't think anymore about impressing somebody, 
but rather expressing because I really want people to understand. When you're a teacher, you work to have the students understand the concept that you're sharing. When you a performer, very few performers are conscious that you're sharing and they just stay in their own world and impress. So I am glad that my life was changed is with teaching, you know. So basically teaching came as an accident, but it became a blessing in disguise. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that. And one final question. I know we had been talking about um, your experience with your students. It has been said that you are described as a an encyclopedia of Latin jazz. Could you speak to that a little bit? Well, I'm going to start telling you that I feel very honored they feel that way, but I always tell them that the only way I know what I know is through the years of teaching, through the years of being surrounded by beautiful people, but I don't know it all. I know that I know that I need to learn more, but I share what I do know. And and I think that's what they think I'm an encyclopedia, but uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm just a person that is passionate about learning, about teaching, about performing, and, and sharing what I continue to learn. So, and I always encourage them, hey, listen, we never stop learning. You know, the day we stop learning is because we transition. You know, so, yes. Uh, as, as I told you, um, Cuban composers are uh, have an important influence in me. So, uh, there's a percussionist and band leader. His name was Mongo Santa Maria, and he wrote a great piece that is a standard, a jazz standard, uh, called Afro Blue. And I was asked to arrange it for the birthday of um, uh, John Coltrane, uh, that who made this uh, piece also famous. And what I did was I used the influences that I have from Latin America, particularly uh, Argentina. There's a section where it goes in what we call a chacarera, but it starts more into the Afro rhythm, if you will. So this is Afro Blue. I hope you like it. Thank you. very important because my father is inspired by my father and a, a daddy in, in, in Puerto Rico, we call it the Papito. So this is a danzón. Danzón is uh, one of the 
all uh, f uh, Cuban styles that is inspired and it's like a ballroom dancing in in Europe when they people dance with their couples and 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 it opens up like what we call a paseo. It's like an introduction where everybody comes with their partner. So I wrote this for him because he inspired me to love danzón and it's called danzón para papito. So it's still a work in progress, but it goes like this. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful music. So you said, so um, you were talking about composing. How long um, do, does it typically take to, to create a piece of work like that? It depends. Uh, sometimes it, it takes a long time. I, 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 I met this beautiful singer, Jill, Jill Scott. She's, and I borrow something she said to me one time. I am not a, a microwave composer. I am a a, a conventional oven and I, I I feel the same way sometimes it comes like I wrote a song for the university choir and it, it was over one night but um the editing takes a long time this piece I have been working on since October uh, and I premiered the piece uh, in March uh, but I'm still working on it the different sections so it depends on um, you know, because as creators, we create something and all of a sudden we go back and say, wait a second, I could do this here. Just like an artist, like somebody paints or somebody that creates a sculpture, they can walk away and then come back with something better. So it, it depends. As long as that we're able to share the message, that's the most important thing. If people wanted to learn more about you, I know that you also perform in the area and close enough that we, we should be promoting where, where you're performing. Um, where could people find more information about that? Uh, on my 
my website, suseortis.com. Also on Instagram, I'm under suseortis. My performances are, are placed there. Amazing. Thank you so much.